गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट सेशन ऑफ द हीट ट्रांसफर हियर वी आर डीलिंग विद द हीट एक्सचेंजर्स यूनिट नंबर फोर एंड इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस्ड विद द व्हाट इज कॉल्ड एज अ क्लासिफिकेशन एंड नो टर्मिनोलॉजी आल्सो व्हाट इज द डेफिनेशन एंड व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट इक्वेशंस दैट वी आर गोइंग टू यूज एंड फॉलोड बाय डेरिवेशन ऑफ द एलएमटीडी then in the second uh, class we are discussed about what is the uh, what are the numerical problems that may come into the picture so as i told last time there are n number of the types of the uh, numerical problems that may one uh, most of the things are given directly and something are indirectly in all cases what is going to important is nothing but q equal to u a l m t d This is the first equation. Then Q H equal to C H into T H I minus T H O, and Q C equal to C C into T C O minus T C I. Remember, this C H is nothing but the M H into C H. M H is the mass flow rate, and uh, this uh, C P H stands for. the specific heat at constant pressure for the hot fluid or the constant pressure itself constant specific heat only then correspondingly it is nothing but the mc into cpc please remember whenever you are using it should be in kilo uh, kg per second and this is in joule per joule per kg kelvin so that you will get the all this thing now in the previous class we have discussed a few problems on the lmtd method which is seems to be very easier okay what is the lmtd is nothing but the theta 1 minus theta 2 divided by ln of theta 1 by theta 2 this is the formula we use both for the parallel flow and the counter flow in case of the cross flow there is a one thing called as a correction factor which is Function of the P and the R, which are defined by the the temperature ratios, as shown in the last time. And I told, please refer to the page numbers of your data handbook, 158 to 161, based on the what is the type of the heat exchanger, parallel flow, counter flow, then uh, multiplicity. All those things are going to be coming into picture. Okay. So I repeat, the correction factor is for the cross flow, okay, where the hot fluid is going like this way and cold fluid is going like this one, or maybe the otherwise. Now the question comes, sir, the LMTD method is so good, so user friendly. Anybody can solve it very easily using these two equations. You can find out the equa uh, the unknown temperature. It's not given. then you can find out the lmtd then go for the either u a or whatever is asked maybe the heat duty also then the question comes if that is the case then why we need to go for the effectiveness method or what we call as a ntu effectiveness method what is ntu ntu stands for the number of transferred units which is given by u a by c minimum now question comes first of all what is this one it is nothing but u is nothing but the overall heat transfer coefficient which is function of the convection resistance of the hot fluid cold fluid as well as the conduction resistance then flowing resistance including everything you will get the u and most of the cases it is given directly and area is also given either directly or the indirectly now question comes what is the c minimum please remember the ch and cc are the two heat capacities CH stands for heat capacity of the hot fluid, and CC stands for the heat capacity of the cold fluid, which is nothing but the M H into C P H, and this is nothing but the M C into C P H. Out of which one should be larger and one should be smaller. Okay, there's a meaning is if suppose this is 100, if this is 101, then obviously this is minimum, or the other way, this is minimum. So this effectiveness is function of the NTU and C minimum by C maximum, what is called as a capacity ratio. Capacity ratio, and that is the derivations we are doing for the today's class. Now, when I talk about all this one, the question comes: Sir, why I require this method? 
ओके द थिंग इज वेन यूर आई हैव गॉट द वन टू थ्री फोर ओके ऑल द टेम्परेचर्स इफ आई हैव गॉट देन आई कैन यूज द एल एम थ्री डी मेथड एंड वेन ऑल द टेम्परेचर्स हैव बिन गिवन इट इज ऑलवेज ए वाइज डिसीजन टू यूज द एल एम थ्री डी मेथड ओनली but the question comes suppose these temperatures are not known means what only two temperatures are known inlet temperature of the hot fluid and inlet temperature of the cold fluid only are known then the question comes what to do can we use this method as i said answer is yes as well as no yes because but it will be too tedious because it will be going into the number of the iterations and alternate to that what we have got the ntu effectiveness method now question comes what is ntu we have discussed it now question comes what is effectiveness effectiveness is something like as uh, efficiency which is nothing but the q actual by q maximum q actual by q maximum so how to get it it is nothing but the s it is the ch into thi minus tho divided by c minimum into thi minus TCI, which is, can be also given as a CC into TCO minus TCI divided by C minimum into THI minus TCI. So this is the effectiveness. Once again, let me tell you what exactly the effectiveness means. If suppose I am taking a parallel flow heat exchanger. okay then this is the temperature profile this is the thi this is the tho this is the tci and this is tco of course the parallel flow then when i should say this is the best or the most efficient one when i can heat this one to the to the maximum temperature or the inlet temperature of the hot fluid rather it can be the other way also where the hot fluid is cooled to the inlet temperature of the cold fluid but actually it won't happen okay if suppose this is 50 and this is 20 this won't reach the 50 rather it will reach only the 30 or 35 whereas this will reach only once again 40 or 35 Means what? This is the actual uh, heat transfer or heat duty and maximum heat duty. And based on that, we need to calculate the effectiveness. Then the question comes. Sir, here also you are using this THO and TCO, and this effectiveness method is useful when these temperatures are not known. For the various reasons, if I don't get the outlet temperature of the hot fluid and the cold fluid then how to get the effectiveness or how to uh, get the performance of a heat exchanger then the question comes this this is the equation but finally i want to reduce this one into ntu in, and the c minimum by c maximum and remember the ntu is nothing but the ua by c minimum right and in this case the tho is not at all required as well as the tco is also not required and that is the what is the derivation of the effectiveness for parallel flow heat exchanger that we are going to do it for the day okay now before proceeding there are certain things to remember okay now what exactly a derivation is there okay derivation is nothing but a process of going to an unknown place from the known means i repeat if derivation is nothing but going for a unknown thing or you can say unknown place using the known means right so same thing we are doing so we are taking for a parallel flow okay so this is parallel flow so this is thi and this is tci okay so do i am writing tho and tco the values are not known the values are not known only the th and tci are known and what is the other thing it is the mh ch and mc cc which is called as a cc and ch okay with this one we want to find out the derivation for the effectiveness okay 
before proceeding for the, this one the basic equations that we have used q equal to u a l m t d then q h equal to yes m h c p h into t h i minus t h o then q c equal to m c c p c t c o minus t c i okay the differential form of the same can be given as dq equal to u into da into lmtd or let me say it is the delta t okay then what about this one it is dq equal to or dqh equal to nothing but the mh cph into dth similarly dqc equal to mc cpc into dtc okay and we know the reason that the qh equal to qc that is a heat loss by the hot fluid is heat gain by the cold fluid therefore i can just write it as dq using this one we have done this derive uh, this uh, equ uh, use the balance in the lmtd derivation also okay please see the lecture number 1 to how exactly go for then i can go it directly then it will be it is delta sorry so how i can write it is the d into delta t divided by delta t should be equal to minus u into 1 upon c h plus 1 upon c c into d a okay fine now question comes this is for a small differential element which is of the dx or you can say the area da then to get it i will go for just go for the integration of that so as you know once again integration of 1 upon x should be equal to ln of x am i right so based on this what i can write it is the ln of delta t from 1 to 2 should be equal to minus u into a okay into 1 upon ch upon 1 upon sorry 1 upon ch plus 1 upon cc okay now you may feel that so you we are deriving the lmtd we really know we are not deriving for the lmtd the things will be changing okay so what i can write it is the ln of delta t2 by delta t1 should be equal to minus u a into 1 upon ch plus 1 upon cc okay based on that what i can write it is the delta t2 divided by delta t1 should be equal to exponential of minus u a okay minus u a divided uh, multiplied by 1 upon ch plus 1 upon cc okay what i changed is nothing but the applying the anti log on the both side therefore it will become the delta t2 divided by delta t1 equal to exponential of minus u a into 1 upon ch plus 1 upon cc now before going for the next okay so we'll write this delta t2 divided by delta t1 equal to exponential of now please see out of this uh, ch and cc sorry one uh, okay out of ch and cc one should be larger so either ch is less than cc or cc is less than ch so two cases are possible it is a very rare case that both will be equal okay now question comes sir how you can tell okay fine just go through the problems that we have solved okay so in the problems okay the hot fluid will generally have the lower heat capacity than the cold fluid okay and oil the first problem only has taken no and oil is flowing so so and so and if you compare the the uh, mh and the ch and cc it will form that ch is 
less than cc but please remember the other case is also not ruled out the other case is also not ruled out therefore we are taking the both cases first let us assume that ch is minimum okay if suppose ch is minimum so what i can write it is 1 upon ua divided by ch into 1 plus ch by cc okay as you can see so, uh, since we assume the ch is equal to minimum okay of ch sorry ch is less than cc that is nothing but mh into ch is less than mc into cc in that case what i can write it is nothing but the delta t2 divided by delta t1 should be equal to exponential of minus u a divided by c minimum okay 1 plus c minimum divided by c maximum please note it whatever the ch and cc are there that i have replaced so we have assumed that mh and ch are nothing but heat capacity of the hot fluid is less than that of the cold fluid therefore the ch becomes the c minimum so using this one what i can write exponential of okay so what is this one you ntu is nothing but okay i uh, i'm sorry it has uh, not been written now but somewhere in the earlier case it has been written that ntu equal to ua by c minimum so what i can write it is minus ntu okay 1 plus c now question comes what exactly this c stands for c stands for one second let me write c equal to c minimum by c maximum in this case it is a ch divided by cc okay that is on the right hand side that is on the right hand side so now question comes what is this one let me write it is delta t2 by delta t1 okay so this equation i will call it as a one of course you can name the few more but i think that this is the uh, can say pilot uh, pivot equation which will change the other derivation now you can say sir what is this delta t2 and delta t1 is nothing but same as the the lmtd only and we have started the derivation with when we don't know this th and tc over not known then what to do okay so with this one the expression on the lhs we have reached the stage therefore we'll talk only about the rhs okay fine now the question comes what to do delta t2 so anybody can tell me what is delta t2 delta t is nothing but delta t2 divided by delta t1 should be equal to th o minus tco divided by thi minus tci right so this is delta t1 and this is delta t2 okay now question comes sir can we do with this one no we cannot do anything much about this one okay uh, let me here is this one then i will start here so that i will get the more space so so i'll write it is a delta t2 divided by delta t1 should be equal to tho minus tco divided by thi minus tci okay but the uh, interestingly we have reached the stage where almost where you started there is no much change in the previous and this equation but remember we are going to do it some mathematical uh, addition operation you can tell so what i will do so i will add okay and i will add and subtract thi so that if i cancel it will remain as tho minus tco only but the denominator will remain the same remember what we have done 
this is the my original equation so i have added the thi and subtracted the thi suppose this is 20 and this is 10 so if i add the 10 and the i am subtract 10 then also the original equation is not affected what we call as a without loss of generality so what we have got it is the tho my plus thi okay minus thi minus tco divided by thi minus tci the question comes sir is it solved no it has not solved the actual derivation can say starts now okay you know that q equal to mh ch thi minus tho and this should be equal to q equal to mc cc into tco minus tci right now what i will take it is nothing but the m i will take the ratio of let me say it is the equation number a and this is equation number b if i take is a a divided by b so what it becomes it is the mh ch divided by mc cc it should be equal to yes it should be equal to it is the tco minus tci divided by T T H I minus T H O. This is the equation I am getting. But you know that M H in C H is nothing but the C minimum, and this is C maximum. Okay, should be equal to T C O minus T C I divided by T H I minus T H O. This is equation number two. now question comes out of which what i know i know th uh, th thi i know tci but i don't know this one therefore i will write the equation for the tco as well as the tho okay so how would uh, write the equation it is nothing but the tci plus okay c minimum divided by c maximum okay into thi minus tho okay please note it this step would be very important in this derivation in the similar way what should i write for the tho yes anybody can write it is nothing but thi minus uh, sorry just a minute we'll take this step then later on okay tco equal to tci plus c minimum by c maximum thi minus tho so what is this c minimum it is nothing but the ch by cc which is nothing but the ch is minimum uh, is less than the cc therefore i can write c minimum by c maximum and what is this called as a capacity ratio capacity ratio in the similar way in a similar way if i write for the tho okay so what is that it is the thi minus c minimum by c maximum sorry uh, now the next step okay so tho remember where you have stop the tco is here right so we'll substitute this uh, tco into this one so what I, the equation becomes it is the tho plus thi minus thi okay so minus of this one it is nothing but the tci minus c minimum by c maximum okay into thi minus tho right now this divided by once again it is thi minus tci okay now in this case we'll pick up the which are easily used for the direct equation now 
these are directly known. Am I right? THI and TCI are directly known. So what I can write? It is a THI minus TCI. Okay. Then question comes. What about this one? So if I write minus THI minus THO. Okay. Then minus C minimum by C maximum. Okay, into THI minus THO. Okay, wait for the few minutes so that I can clean that board and we'll go to the next there is, uh, next step. Okay, let's take here. Okay, fine. So this whole divided by THI minus TCI. Now, what I will do, okay, uh, just before that one step once more, THI minus TCI, okay, then minus THI minus THO, then minus C. So what is the C? Capacity ratio. I am using or let me say it is C minimum by C maximum only. Once again THI minus TCI divided by THI minus TCI. Okay. Then the question comes. So THI minus TCI okay, minus THI minus THO, okay, into 1 plus C, okay. Now I will divide the each term, I have taken this THI minus THO as outside, so what remains is 1 plus C. If I open this particular, uh, what is say, the bracket, it will uh, use, uh, it will get the original shape. So what is the C? C is nothing but C minimum by C maximum. Okay, so then this is THI minus TCI, okay, minus, now anybody can tell me what would be this one, it is the THI, sorry, THI minus THO, okay, sorry, THI minus TCI, okay, this is on the left hand side of the, our original equation, fine, now, Question comes what to do? So can you see this is THI minus TCI divided by THI minus TCI. Can I write it say 1? Yes, without any problem we can write 1. Now what about this one? Let me write first 1 plus C. Okay. Now what about this one? It is a THI minus THO. Please recall the original definition of uh, your effectiveness. Effectiveness is nothing but the Q actual by Q maximum. Right? Then what I can write? It is a MH into CH divided, uh, multiplied by THI minus TCI, THI minus THO divided by MC minimum THI minus TCI. So since both are equal, that is the C minimum is hot fluid only, therefore I can write it, it as the THI minus TCI, THI minus THO divided by THI minus TCI is nothing but the, I can write the effectiveness. I can write as a effectiveness, okay. Uh, I assume no confusion but still I will t want to take it once again. Remember, this is the one term and this two will it come into the, this term. So, if I divide the individual, the denominator to the individual terms, so it will become like this one. So, it is 1 minus 1 plus C. What is C? It is a heat capacity ratio. C minimum by C maximum, which is always less than the 1 into, into the effectiveness. Okay? And this should be equal to what is our right hand side exponential of minus NTU 1 plus C. C, 1 plus C, 
okay but question comes whether we want the c no we know the c but we want the effectiveness so if i solve for the effectiveness it will be 1 upon exponential into 1 minus ntu into 1 plus c divided by 1 plus c okay this is the equation for the effectiveness of the parallel flow heat exchanger i repeat it is for the parallel flow heat exchanger okay the question comes sir is it necessary that the ch is always less than the cc that is the hot fluid will be having always the lesser heat capacity than the cold fluid the answer is need not be it can be the other way also it can be the other way also in that case in that case if suppose i take cc by ch cc by ch then there is a small thing will be done in this case hmm? so whatever you are taking here it will be exactly reverse that is nothing but the it is c minimum c minimum by c maximum equal to cc by ch equal to T C R T H I minus T H O divided by T C O minus T C R. This is the equation, and whatever the delta T one, delta T two we have used, there you need to add and subtract T C I. Okay, and you have to write the equation for the T H O. You have to write the equation for the T H O. If you have written that one. okay if we are written that one then the same equation will be done same equation will be done so in a whatever you are taking about okay here tho minus tco was there right then in this case you have written for the tco because we assume that th uh, ch was minimum but if suppose the other way that is the cc is the minimum then you are right for the Yes. So, from the same equation, whatever you are taking, from the same equation, if you are written, then you will get the equation for the T H O T H. Uh, what is the equation? It is the T H O plus T C I minus T C I minus T C U. But you are going to substitute for the T H O. Then the question comes, sir, why you are every time the targeting the T C O and the T H O? Why you are eliminating it? Okay. Remember, anyhow we don't know this. I don't know THO or I don't know the TCO. That is the reason I am using the what is called as a NTU method. If I would have known, I have directly gone into what is called as a LMTD method. Since it is not available, if suppose the CH is minimum, then eliminate TCO with the help of this one. If suppose the CH is CC is minimum, then eliminate the TCO. Then your equation will be as simple as this one. What is that? Let me tell you. the question for the effectiveness of the parallel flow it is nothing but the ntu into 1 plus c divided by 1 plus c and remember this effectiveness will be always less than 1 or if we express in terms of the percentage it will be less than the 100% that is very much important okay so using this one we are going to solve one problem but remember on the same line i repeat on the same line you can get the expression for the counter flow also okay yes. on the same line this is for parallel flow and this is for the counter flow so when i got counter flow the equation will be something different let me share with you so please refer to the page number 152 second column so it is nothing but the exponential minus n 1 minus c divided by 1 minus c exponential minus n 1 minus c okay so if you see uh, whatever the n means n stands for ntu okay let me write 
NTO. Okay, so the effectiveness effectiveness can be easily found out with the help of the only two parameters, the NTO and the C. But remember, the NTO is nothing but U A by C minimum. So, in any particular problem or the solving solution of such problems, you should be able to find out what is the C minimum and what is the NTO. If you know, I think you can solve any of the problems. We will take such problems, one of the such problem now for the parallel flow and similarly you can solve for the counter flow as well. Okay. Now, let us start the problem. Okay, please take down the problem. A refrigerator is designed to cool 250 kilo kg per hour of hot fluid of specific heat, double three five zero joule per kg Kelvin at 120 degree centigrade using a parallel flow arrangement. Thousand kg of uh, kg per hour of cooling water is available from the cooling uh, for the cooling purpose at a temperature of 10 degree centigrade, if the overall uh, heat transfer coefficient is 1160 watt per meter square Kelvin and the surface area of the heat exchanger is 0.25 meter square, calculate the outlet temperature of the co uh, cooled liquid and water, also find the effectiveness of the heat exchanger. Okay, now let us try to solve this problem, what is given? Okay, first of all, it is given as MH. Okay, then the CPH or we'll start with our original what is called as a table method. So it is a hot fluid and this is the cold fluid. So it is the mass flow rate. Let me write MF. So it will be 250 and this is 1000 of course in kg per hour. Please convert them into the kg per second later. Okay, then the specific heat, which is nothing but it is double three five zero, whereas I will take as a four one eight six, of course in joule per kg Kelvin. Then uh, inlet temperature is nothing but one twenty degree centigrade and ten degree centigrade. Ten degree centigrade. Then what else is given? U is given as one double one six zero watt per meter square. Kelvin and area is given as 0.25 meter square. Okay, then what we are supposed to find out? We need to find out the THO, TCO, and also the effectiveness for the parallel flow. Parallel flow arrangement. Okay, so we'll start. Wait for a few minutes. Okay, I hope you have taken the problem then we'll start first of all we calculate the ch ch is nothing but the mh into cc okay which is nothing but the 250 divided by 3600 into 3350 okay now question comes why this uh, divided by 3600 because it is given in kg per hour we need to convert that one so it comes to be 232.63 okay what should be in it it should be watt per kelvin isn't it this is kg per second and this is joule per kg kelvin so kg kg get cancelled so joule per second is watt watt per kelvin similarly cc is nothing but 1000 divided by 3600 into okay what is the mass cp it is 4186 Okay, so what would be the uh, uh, the heat capacity of the cold fluid? It is the 11, 1162.7 watt per Kelvin. Okay, now can you compare the CC and the CH, which is smaller? Okay, <coughs> please remember don't compare the MH and the C, or you can say M and C separately. Please. Take the product, then compare. So it is 232 and 1162. So obviously the CC will be CC will be larger. Therefore, we say that CH is C minimum. 
okay then we'll talk about the what is called as a ratio of the heat capacity so it comes as a c minimum by c maximum it is nothing but the 232 sorry 232.63 divided by 1162.7 which is nothing but as a 0.2 okay then you know that the effectiveness is function of the c and the ntu okay now we have calculate the c that is a heat capacity ratio so we will find out the ntu so how to find out the ntu ntu is nothing but it is the ua by c minimum okay you know what is u how much u it is a 1160 into area is the 0.25 divided by c minimum is nothing but ch it is the 232.63 okay and uh, this is a non dimensions number so what will get yes what will the answer for this the answer will be 1.1.24 i am limiting myself to up to the two decimals you can just include another one not an issue okay so we know that the uh, c we know the ntu so we find out the effectiveness for the parallel flow is nothing but 1 minus exponential minus ntu divided by sorry multiplied by 1 plus c into the bracket divided by 1 plus c okay if you substitute and substitute the value of the ntu as 1.24 and c as 0.2 and with the all thing you will get the value of the 0.645 or will say the effectiveness is 64.5% 64.5% okay now one thing we have found out the question comes is it over the answer is no the answer is no we need to find out something more what is that it is a tho and tco how to find out with this one uh, let me take the let me shift on this side of the board okay so we know that effectiveness is nothing but the q actual by q maximum am i right so what is the q actual it is the mh okay ch thi minus tho divided by what is the q max it is the uh, c minimum okay into thi minus tci this is the maximum temperature difference is possible okay since these two are equal let me cancel so I try to find out so effectiveness is nothing but the thi minus tho divided by thi minus tci okay now let us understand do you know the effectiveness yes we know the value indirectly because we have found out okay then thi it is directly given this is directly given this is directly given the only unknown is the tho so it uh, reduced into the form of one equation one unknown therefore we need to find out the value of the tho by using the first algebra then arithmetic that is nothing but the it is the thi minus effectiveness times of thi minus tci so how much it will be it will be 120 minus 0.645 into 110 so if you work out the answer would be roughly 49.05 degree centigrade similarly if you apply the same equation means what you can use this one as mc into cc into th tco minus tci divided by the same thing then all other things are known other than the tco so you can find out which comes to be around 22 point let me check sorry it is 24.22 how to get it very simple effectiveness is nothing but the m okay c c c t c o minus t c i divided by m h c h then this is t h i minus t c i
ओके ऑल अदर थिंग्स नोन अदर दैन द टी सी ओ सो टी सी ओ मोन्स टू बी ट्वेंटी फोर पॉइंट टू टू डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड ट्वेंटी फोर पॉइंट टू टू डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड दैट इज द एंसर वी ओके नो क्वेश्चन का आंसर द इक्वेशन सीम्स टू बी लिटिल विथ डिफिकल्ट यस अग्री बट क्वेश्चन का आंसर शुड आई रिमेंबर दिस वन द आंसर इज नो दिस इज अवेलेबल योर इन योर डाटा हैंडबुक प्लीज रेफर टू द पेज नंबर 152 ऑफ द सिक्स्थ एडिशन ओके कॉलम नंबर 2 152 यस कॉलम नंबर सर रो नंबर 2 यू विल गेट द इक्वेशन फॉर द इफेक्टिवनेस ऑफ द counter flow equation uh, row number 1 you will get the equation number for the equation effectiveness for the parallel flow okay so this is for the parallel flow and similarly counter flow both are in there in the page number 152 please look into it okay i hope it's understood but the, there is a question so what is the proof that this is right yes what is the proof that this is right okay if whether it is right or wrong let me check it once again with a different method fine now i will show the another method to check whether it is right or wrong okay now as you know the effectiveness is nothing but the q actual by q maximum okay now effectiveness you know it is 0.645 into what is the q max it is the ch or let me say mh into cph into thi minus tci if you work out it comes to be actual heat transfer or heat low heat duty it comes to be 16 point uh, kilowatt okay although the heat duty has not been asked but we are using it now question comes how to get, how to know that this this is right whatever we have done it is right okay fantastic okay then we'll take this one this is our parallel flow this is a thi this is this is tci this is the tho and this is tco TCO and TCO. You know the values. This is 120. This is 10, and this is 49, and this is 24.22. Okay. Now, since we know all the temperatures, can I find out the theta one and theta two? Yes. Obviously, I can find out. It is 110 degree centigrade, and this is roughly theta two is. 24.77 degree centigrade, and you know that heat duty equal to U A L M T D. So first calculate the L M T D. How to calculate the L M T D? L M T D is nothing but theta one minus theta two divided by ln of theta one by theta two, which comes to be 57.22 degree centigrade. Okay, you know this one is 1160 directly given. This is 0.25. and this is 57.22 degree centigrade okay with this you calculate it comes to be 16.57 kilowatt which is matching with our this answer okay although a one or two percent error may be there because of the uh, approximation but this matches agree with the answer which is obtained by the what is called as the nt effectiveness method or the lmtd method so this shows the parallelism between these two. means what even if suppose all the temperatures are given you can surely use the either the uh, lmtd method or the nt method but i will always recommend to use the lmtd if you know the all the temperature suppose one temperature is not given you can use the energy balance to find out the temperature then find out okay but suppose if you know only two temperature which is most common in the practical applications then go for the nto method only okay now this is for the parallel flow now use the same data to find out the the counter flow counter flow effectiveness and counter flow tho and counter flow tcu okay so what is the change just you observe it 
once again the same data all the data is the same the only thing is it will be a counter flow heat exchanger means what tci is entering from this one and exiting from the the other way so it is 10 degree centigrade once again we don't know tho and tco only the thi is known you know the ntu okay it won't change you know uh, the c minimum yes then just substitute in the equation given in the 152 page number row number 2 then find out the effectiveness and based on whatever you have done you have find out the tho and tco okay now i will share the answer of this one in the next class which will be my last class for this heat exchangers where we have uh, discussed the most of the things rather all of the things whatever there in the syllabus there after we'll discuss something about the from the glimpse of the university question papers or the previous question papers from the autonomous or maybe from the vto also or other universities will discuss it okay but the one question remains same sir i agree that heat duty whatever you have obtained okay they are same but oh, in exam should i do always like this one in that case how i can aim at 19 or 20 out of 20 in the exam yes your question is right so i will show alternate way of checking whether your answer is approximately at least you can cross check to what extent it is right this is the one way but the other way is also there that i will discuss in the next class okay within this oh, with that one i am closing my session but before that few more important things okay the derivation whatever we have seen there are four derivations two i have done okay one is for the parallel flow okay lmtd another is parallel flow counter flow that is uh, to be done by you on the same lens what you have done okay whereas in the into effectiveness method you are going to do for the parallel sorry parallel flow has been done by me counter flow has to be done by you on the same lines there is no change there is no change even in the parallel flow there are two cases either ch is minimum or cc is the minimum so i have shown one case the other case you just continue and you can get it okay just pick up the question papers that i am telling you out of this four one four different uh, param uh, derivations at least one has been arrived at least out of uh, 10 papers 9 to 8 to 9 times which has been arrived so this is a easy derivation not uh, nothing very much uh, heavy mathematics is there simple arrangement of the terms is there if you can do i hope you will get the full marks in the exam as well as the interview as well okay and whatever the lmtd and ntu definitions are there are always the most likely questions in your laboratory sessions or maybe why was or maybe a job interview also okay with this one i am closing my session okay i hope i have explained in a way that you can understand see you in the next class okay till then thank you bye